Hello, grade tens, and welcome to today's lesson in which we are going to explore different types of angles and investigate parallel lines. Let us join Eloise and begin exploring this topic. Today, we're going to have a treasure hunt. Our two contestants are Sharon and Theodore. Their teacher is going to give us a hand with this exercise. Each of them have a camera. They have to search the school and find photographs of as many different examples of angles as they can. The first one back is the winner. For all you out there watching, you can join in, so have a pen or pencil and a piece of paper ready. Divide your sheet of paper into four columns, headed diagram, in the world, name of angle and size of angle like this. As our learners photograph the angles they find, make a quick sketch in the diagram column, try to name the angle and give its size. Later you can go back and stick in a picture of an object that has that angle. For example, if one of them finds, say, a right angle on a desk, sketch a right angle in the diagram column. Write down right angle in the name of angle column and 90 degrees in the size column. And maybe stick in a picture of a desk where the legs meet the tabletop at 90 degrees. On your marks, get set. Go! Are you alright? Do you need medical help? No, I'm okay. I'm just trying to trick G. Why? See, you've got something I want, and I don't want him to find out what it is. What do you mean? I'll show you. Can you hold up your stopwatch for me? Ah. Smart girl! If you know what that angle is, write it down in your table. It looks like Theodore has found something. Let's see what it is. He's found an easy one. Do you know what it is? If you do, make a sketch of it and fill in the rest of your table. It looks like Theodore has found something else. Let's see what it is. Good thinking. If you know what this is, fill in your table. If not, don't worry, we'll be going through them all at the end of the race. So far, it's two to Theodore and one to Sharon. Let's find out what she's up to. It looks like our competitors are about to get two each. Let's see what Sharon has come up with. Here's another angle to put in your table. But the pace is hotting up, so let's find Theodore. Oh, it looks like someone's got car troubles. Is he going to help out? That'll cost him a lot of time. No, it looks like he's found another angle. Let's see what it is. That's five angles so far. How many have you filled in? It looks like time's running out for Sharon. She's even looking at the clock. But maybe she's not worried about time. Maybe she's found another angle. Let's see. Now it's three each and we're near the end. The question is, who will finish first? And how many have you managed to fill in on your table? Let's get back to Theodore. Now what's he up to? Now it's four, three to Theodore. Unless Sharon can put in a last-minute spurt, it looks like he's going to win. She's found something, but she'd better be quick. Let's see what angles she's come up with. Very good. Do you know what angle she's found? If so, write it down. But she'd better get a move on, because here comes Theodore towards the finish line and Sharon is nowhere in sight. It looks like nothing can stop him now. She's caught up. They're almost neck and neck and the finish line's dead ahead. And it's a tie. They crossed the line together. Well done, guys. As far as the race went, it was a tie. But how many angles did you manage to photograph? I got four. Me too. Let's have a look at them. 
Those of you at home, check your results too. And if there are any you didn't get, it might be a good idea to write them in as we go through them. The first is not the easiest. The stopwatch represents a revolution. Remember, a revolution is an angle that goes through 360 degrees. This next one is easy. It's a right angle. And as we all know, a right angle is 90 degrees. The third angle is also straightforward. It's a straight line. And again, as we all know, the angle that creates a straight line is 180 degrees. Well spotted there, Sharon, an obtuse angle. Here the angle is greater than 90 degrees, but less than a straight line angle. So the angle is greater than 90 degrees, but less than 180 degrees. Theodore, you did brilliantly with this one. Here we see an acute angle, which as you can see, is less than 90 degrees. And a reflex angle. The angle is greater than 180 degrees, but less than 360 degrees. Here we see the angles created by the leg of a ladder to the floor. The angles either side of the leg are on a straight line, in this case the floor. So these are adjacent supplementary angles and they add up to 180 degrees. Oops, it looks like you might have missed one. What do you mean? If he had looked at the other leg, he would have seen another type of adjacent angle. The angles made with the other leg of the ladder and the floor and wall are adjacent complementary angles. These angles share a common edge and together make up a 90 degree angle. All angles sharing a common edge that are next to each other are called adjacent angles. Ah, oh, man. Let's look at the last one. Here we have vertically opposite angles. Notice that the angles are equal. Congratulations, you both came back with four different angles, so I guess it's a tie. But so far, they've only found angles. Let's see if they can find some parallel lines and the special types of angles they create. Hey, what about this? Perfect. Now let's have a look at what we can say about these parallel lines. First of all, what are parallel lines? Parallel lines are lines on a plane that will never meet no matter how far they're extended. Good. Now have a look at the parallel lines. What are these two angles called and what do we know about them? Aren't they equal? No, they're not. They're supplementary. These two angles are called co-interior angles and they are supplementary. That is, they add up to 180 degrees. Now what about these angles? What are they called and what do we know about them? Aren't these called alternate angles? Yes, they are alternate angles and they are equal. Remember, we can only say this because we know that lines are parallel. Right, now another one. Name these angles and tell me what you know about them. These are corresponding angles. They're equal. <laughs> Clever girl. Because the lines are parallel, the corresponding angles are equal. Finally, there is one more thing we know about parallel lines. Do you remember what this line cutting across both parallel lines is called? No. It's called a transversal. This transversal intersects the parallel lines at 90 degrees like this to make a perpendicular. And what if we had two such perpendicular transversals? What can you tell me about these two perpendicular transversals? Okay, I'll tell you. The answer is they will be equal in length.
So the two lines are equidistant from one parallel line to the other. It shows us that parallel lines always stay the same distance apart. In other words, they are equidistant. So any perpendicular drawn from one parallel line to the other will always be exactly the same length. I hope you tried to participate in the treasure hunt. Did you find any other angles? You see, there are many examples of maths everywhere we look. Great Tens, thank you for joining us once again. And don't forget to watch the task video so that you can practice and apply this knowledge. You'll also be able to find more resources on Euclidean geometry on our website, www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. If you're really good and don't get your parallel lines crossed, you could grow up to be an alternate angel. Until next time, goodbye.